The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at stitching wounds closed. Now before we go on, there's actually two other methods that you can use for um, achieving wound closure. One is a version of scotch tape, which we call steris strips for skin. The other is tissue glue. Now these methods uh, will work pretty well as well, but stitching is still king if you need to close a wound. And the reason why is because of its tensile strength. If you imagine a cut on my finger here, every time my finger moves, it's going to flex the cut and try to pull it back open. So that's why if you go to an emergency room or to your family doctor, chances are they're going to use a stitch. It's much more reliable. Probably the only time I will use uh, stir strips is if it's a kid and um, I don't want to traumatize them or if it's something on the face where there's not going to be much movement. All right, so uh, today what I've done is arrange a test subject to demonstrate to you the method of um, suturing. So I've got this moulage orange, which I'll show you here, uh, complete with some um, ketchup to mimic blood. And I've put a nasty gash in them right there. So we're going to close that now using some um, stitching techniques. But before I do, I'm also going to... Um, well, I guess I should tell you why I'm using orange. Uh, orange actually has a surface that's um, pretty good at mimicking the, the feel of uh, actual skin when you pass a needle through it. I actually practiced on oranges uh, to get my gumption up to do my first uh, phlebotomies and injections in real patients in real life because I, I really didn't like the idea of having to stab someone. So I had to get my uh, courage up by stabbing oranges. So I apologize to you tree huggers out there. There were some oranges damaged in the production of this uh, video. Uh, the other thing too is if you look really closely at the orange surface, you'll, you'll see here on um, video cam too that there's lots of pits and dimples just like on real skin. So again, it's, it's a good mimicker for um, skin surface. Now, why do we even bother to go to the trouble of uh, stitching skin uh, or wounds? Well, there's actually two primary reasons. One is that um, it's the fastest way to stop bleeding. If you imagine a cut, as open and there's blood gushing out of it like an oil well, the fastest way to cap that and stop that, arrest that bleeding is to pull the edges together and close it uh, using a, a ligature or suture or stitch, whatever you want to call it. Same thing. The second reason why we go to the effort of um, stitching wounds close is because you get much better final results by stitching a wound close. Again, if you imagine that this surface here that was continuous has been um, severed, so we have a cut here. This opening will take much longer to close in uh, as the neighbors have to meet themselves one cell at a time growing across from each side until they touch again. Whereas if I bring the, the two together and um, hold them with a stitch, uh, then there's only a millimeter or less for them to traverse. So you get much faster closure and a lot less uh, final scarring. So what's not to like about that? So without further ado, uh, let's take a look here at our subject orange. Now, in the real world, uh, these are the real tools I would use in my office to stitch your wound clothes. So this is uh, some Ethylon, size 3.0. Uh, it's basically an uh, expensive version of nylon with uh, a needle that instead of being straight is curved, so it makes it easier to pass through skin, as you'll see in a second here as I demonstrate. The other tools here, uh, this is a sterile pack, uh, fresh out of an autoclave. There's a needle driver a forceps and a scissors. Now the other thing is in real life I would be using um, surgical gloves, <coughs> excuse me, but um, for this demonstration I'm just going to use these uh, pretend gloves here. All right, now the other thing is uh, in real life instead of just using a piece of uh, tissue paper to remove the blood from the subject, uh, if you see me looking up all the time it's because I have uh, video cam 2 overhead I'm um, not actually looking up to heaven. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to clean that. So I'll pretend this is an alcohol swab because in real life uh, that's what we would be using. We'd use alcohol to sterilize the surface. Okay, now I'm going to open our packet. In real life, uh, when I'm working, I usually, 
actually work from the packet surface because it's sterile inside. So um, the main piece that I'll need for now is the needle driver. So I'll show you that there. And it's, a need, it's called a needle driver because you use it to hold the, um, the surface of the suture, which I'll demonstrate to you now. And then you use it to literally drive into the um, subject. Okay, I hope you can see this technical detail here. All right, so you see me grabbing it here. All right. And I usually have to give it a final adjustment with my fingers like that. Voila. Okay. Clean this a little more. All right, so here's our subject with the bad cut. Now, in real life, obviously, I would also have uh, put some anesthetic in this uh, poor subject before I started using the needle. But as our orange is not going to scream, or at least I hope not, we're just going to proceed. So, you usually bite, uh, say, about uh, half a centimeter away from the edge. The reason why you don't want to go too close up to the edge is that later on when, when the needle passes through, it has a tendency to rip itself through the skin. So to, you take a nice big bite. You'd be amazed how much this actually feels like real skin. It's uncanny. Oh, there's still lots of this damn ketchup on it. Okay. Or it feels a little, it's a little bit different. Okay. Now, I hope you could see there the needle protruding from the other end. Uh, can you see that? Okay. So now I'm going to grab that piece that's sticking out with my needle driver and pull it through. Now, what you do is you pull it all the way until there's just a piece of string left sticking out. I'm going to make it longer than in real, uh, just so it's easier to see on camera. Can you guys appreciate that? Okay, true believers. Now, um, I actually will use my fingers and gloves like this in reality. You don't have to though, you could use a forceps like that. All right, now here's the, here's the magic. So in the technique that I use, you pull it apart. Can you see that there on the screen? Oh, sorry, there, now you can see it. Um, you, you separate that, that almost forms like a, a V with a short arm here and a long arm here. Now what I'm going to do is use the needle driver as my tool and wrap and then wrap again, two wraps. Then I'm going to open the needle driver and grab the short arm of the V like thus. And then when I pull, look at the magic, hope you can see that there. And boom, closed. Then I go on the long arm again, twist once, grab the short, pull the opposite direction. Boom, magic. Then I do it one last time, I'm gonna do two turns, grab and pull. Beautiful. That wound is closing up. Now we just use the scissors here and snip off the edges. Again, I'm going to make this um, hyperbole. In real life, I would cut them shorter than I'm going to demonstrate here. I'll bring this up to you guys here. Hope you can see that. And cut there. There we go. So that's stitch one. Again, if I was doing this on a real individual, um, I would take pains to make the edges shorter than I am here. I just want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, now, even though theoretically one stitch is probably sufficient to keep this wound closed, I never would just stop with one stitch. The reason being is I like to build some redundancy into my closures because there's always a possibility that somebody's gonna go swimming or go in a, submerge themselves in a bath or just move their arm too hard or whatever body part it was, flex their finger too hard and cause my stitch to pop. And if that happens, that's catastrophic because then all my labor and work is wasted. The wound just opens right back up. So I usually will put in three at a, as a minimum. That way if one pops, there's still another two holding everything tightly together. 
For the purpose of this demonstration though, I think I'll just do two. Uh, just in the interest of saving time, because I don't want to bore you with uh, laborious details. So this area here still looks a little pooky and I notice there's still some blood, AKA ketchup uh, coming out of it. So I'm gonna just um, put another ligature in through here. All right, so again, I bite it far out, twist my wrist or flick my wrist, whatever you wanna call it. Drive that needle in. Then Grab that needle that's still sticking out there. Oh, that's not in focus way. Oh, come on, focus. All right, anyway, you get the idea. So then I'll grab here and pull through. Easy peasy, getting the hang of it? It's, you thought medicine was hard. And then you do two wraps again, grab the short arm, pull. Then opposite side, I'm doing it a little faster now because you guys got the hang of it. Then another two. In real life, this would actually be very fast. It'd be a blur on the camera. Alrighty, and then snip, snip. And there you have it. A very happy orange with a wound that's going to heal very nicely. Look beautiful a week later. Oh, yeah! Now with these stitches, um, my instructions are typically, um, <clears throat> because the wound is still weak and there's a chance of bacteria uh, on the surface getting in and messing up my work and causing an infection, I usually will instruct people each day after the shower when the wound's at its weakest to just apply a, a dab of uh, antiseptic um, gel or ointment on it. Uh, and seven days later I'll tell them to come back, let me take the stitches out. Except on faces, faces uh, heal very fast, so we'll often say come back in five days. We also use much smaller um, ligatures or sutures than, um, than this stuff here. We'd use like 4.0 or 5.0. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I close wounds. And um, again, this is not unique to me. This is a technique that most family doctors and emergency room doctors will employ. So you have the gist of it now. Um, there's no magic to it. There's our final subject. Thank you for watching. Just gotta take a quick. Sorry if my voice was a little hoarse during this uh, production. One of the myths is that <clears throat> doctors don't get sick. <laughs> that is not true. I have a flu right now. Uh, I saw a lot of flu cases last week and I, I think I picked something up from one, someone. Anyway, so thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that way I can keep you in the loop as I add new videos and um, I'll see you on the next production. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.